infinite complacency. People went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. What if monsters and entities exist? What if all the encounters reported on podcasts like Into the Fray are true? What happens when they creep into our world from other dimensions? Who would stop them? Who could? Project Threshold. This fall 2023, Project Threshold, created by Craig Crawford, is releasing on Amazon in novellas telling the stories of courageous teams battling against deadly horrors invading our world. And sometimes, they don't win. They beat back the monsters in secrecy so the rest of us can live without worrying what might be lurking under our beds. Go to projectthreshold.com and discover more. Join the team to learn about those who fight for us. Get monthly updates, background, free stories, and merch in a newsletter. Check out ProjectThreshold.com and protect humanity from darkness. So in this edition of Into the Fray, I welcome on listener and Patreon member, Jessica. She uh, wrote me actually a perfect email that I love to get, which included uh, bullet points, but not really any details of those bullet points. It was the perfect concoction for me to go, yes, let's do this. So here we are. Uh, Welcome on, Jessica. I know that you've had a number of experiences that we will be covering today, and that these began in your childhood home. You guys lived there, I think, 27 years or something. And forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, but it was Doughton or Doughton Drive that you guys lived on, right? Uh, It's um, Doughton Drive. And I will will say the place where uh, it technically located literally due to just being on the on the proper road and everything. Our house was on a corner. So if we had our mailbox on the other road, we'd be in a different town or city. It's but the, um, the place is called Bahama which is spelt like Bahama, but not at all the same place, uh, B-A-H-A-M-A. The house was stick-built by my uh, my parents bought the land and they decided to build on it. And so we're the first ones there. And because I know a lot of people say, well, what, was it previously owned? Was it crazy? Was it anything like that? Like, no, we. I had my third birthday right after we moved in. I never really felt scared or anything. I have... An older brother, he's five years older than me, and of course he'd be a older brother that would love to terrify his little younger sister um, sometimes, but it'd just be like the, oh, don't look outside after dark, they'll look back at you. You know, the stupid, he, oh God, he would, um, he would grab, I'd be asleep in my bed and he would crawl in and grab my be- legs and pull me out. Oh. So that was, yeah, but he stopped that after um, I the last time he did it was right before Halloween. I think he only did during Halloween or something like that, but I was going to be Catwoman for Halloween. And my mom had bought me some, you know, knee high boots, you know, for a little kid. And I grabbed those boots and started whacking at the monster that was grabbing my legs. And he decided to stick that (laughs) after, you know, so took care of that. Yeah. Yeah. Took care of that. But first creepy thing that ever happened, I was about maybe, um, I think at most like seven years old and I was, it was, it was after dark and I was going downstairs um, to whatever, either it was ready for dinner or I was just going down to watch TV or something. And the, the way that my house was laid out, it's, 
a long hallway uh, that literally you can see from you, one end of the house was the playroom and the other end in the house was my mom's bedroom. Uh, and you could basically stand in either doorway and just look down the hallway and, you know, my room would be on one side, my brother's room would be on the other and so on and so on. And I was turning to go down the stairs, which basically a straight shot from going up to the stairs would lead right into my mom's bedroom. I turned the corner to start going down and I hear a, just like, you know, someone trying to whisper to get my attention. And I looked back into my mom's bedroom and she had this full framed brass bed. I mean, the whole entire frame of the thing was brass, like solid, beautiful, wonderful, golden shininess. And it looked darker in that room. There wasn't any lights on it, but I know what the lights from the hallway would reflect off of that bed. I know what it would be like. And I, it just seemed darker in there. And I saw these two shadowy, hunched over figures by the, the side of my mom's bed. They had these glowing red eyes and they said in this high pitched, almost like a little girl voice, come play with us. And then they just took off into the darkness and the room lightened up a little bit. My re my immediate reaction for being a little seven-year-old was go down the stairs and don't say anything because I, I don't know. I just was like, I'm not going into that bedroom um, and I'm just going to go down the stairs and never talk about it. It was not my brother. I can, I can tell you that right now. It was not my brother because he was downstairs. And also when the, when the shadows took off, they didn't make a sound. I... I don't know what the heck that was. It was just, it was, it was a creepy darkness that was, it, it was a, it was a crazy one-off. I mean, I never had anything like that again, uh, but granted that even that one experience made me never want to look into dark bedrooms uh, for oh. the longest period of, in case I'd ever see those things again. I mean, that's a couple um, of unfortunate things. Uh, not only just the sighting of the, the hunched over figures but you have the combo of the red eyes and then that horrible high-pitched voice saying that uh no thanks yeah and and they they giggled they 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 did it was come play with us and they giggled and even the eyes moved when they giggled like you know how when someone's laughing their eyes sort of like you know bounce up slightly up and down and it was it was I don't know what the heck. I don't even know how the heck I didn't even tell my parents that there's something, you know, scary upstairs. I don't know. I think I might've been, you know, they might've said, Oh, you're just making something up or it's just your brother trying to scare you or something or stuff like that just wasn't brought up um, at my house and everything like that. Right. Um, yeah. But apparently what my, my mom had um, told me uh, when I mentioned I was going on to do the show she had mentioned that there were um, things going on in the neighborhood. Uh, she found it was maybe further down the road from us, but it was, a, a, she told me, literally, I just found about this recently. It was a dead dog in a garbage bag that um, had parts of his skin removed. Mm. I didn't know about that. I knew that she had also found a white cat that had been um as she said, sacrificed that, that led to briefly seeing a ghost cat in our garage, like just literally a once off time, the dogs were barking in the garage and we went down stairs. This was about maybe around my same age. Uh, and there was this cat just sitting on the windowsill inside the garage, beautiful white Persian thing, which was really where we didn't own my own cats. My dad hates cats and everything. Uh, we don't think that the dogs would have cornered the cat or anything to get in there. But basically what we did was um, we just opened up the garage door and the cat calmly jumped down and walked out, turned the corner. And me being seven-year-old me who loves animals and everything, I thought I'm going to follow the cat to make sure he's okay. And I turned the corner and nothing. There's no cat there. There's no anything and that was when my mom had um told me that she had found the sacrificed cat and she had buried it properly and gave it um mm. red prayers over it stuff like that people that hurt but animals it, should be just strung up i can't stand that when people yeah uh bad things about I, animals. 
No, I, I have, um, I've had animals all my life. I have horses and, uh, uh, cats and dogs and yeah, I will do any, go out of my way to help animals as much as I can. Yeah. That's some really dark stuff. That's a, that's a recipe for some really, really bad. I mean, beyond karma, that's just horrible. Yeah. I mean, there was even, we found out years later that, you know, I live out in the country, so I when, when I say, you know, just a little bit down the road, it's maybe like three miles down the road or something like that. But uh, we found out that there was a dog fighting ring in the, you know, quote unquote neighborhood, you know, just the same general area. And, you know, there were, there were, it, looking, at, growing up there at the time, I was living out in the country, you know, everyone keeps themselves and you don't think about how weird stuff is. But now that I'm looking back, I'm like, that was a, odd closed off neighborhood it, it was just it was you know it, I don't know it just maybe it was something weird but yeah there were there were mistreatments of animals and everything there well, like people kept think, to themselves kind of thing yeah people kept to themselves yeah it was just I mean you know we did neighborhood trick-or-treating and everything but I couldn't tell you I didn't have any friends in the neighborhood uh, you know, and I was never really invited over to houses for sleepovers or anything like that. It was just people in the country keep them themselves and and everything. You know, for the most part, it was it was quiet and everything. I would see nothing really like crazy or anything. Occasionally, I would see like little white things out of the corner of my eyes in the house and whatnot. Nothing. I was thinking, oh, maybe it's the ghost cat coming back to visit me. I don't know. It's, or maybe it's at the time that I need glasses. I I have no idea. Um, the next time that something notable happened was I was a teenager or something. And I remember I was sick and laying in bed and it was just, I was getting over a stomach flu and um, my, my house is a two story house. And so it was just after dark and I normally was the sort tor- to because of my brother and everything saying there are things outside looking at uh, back at you i would normally just close my blinds before it got completely dark but because i was sick and because i was watching tv and because i was older and not nearly as scared of the dark as i was i left my blinds up and the way that my bed was angled i could see out my peripheral vision out into um out the windows and everything and like i said i'm on the second story in, in my bedroom and I just see this globe of light appear. It was probably, I'd say it's about the size of a cantaloupe and it was a gold, sort of a golden light. You know how um, car lights used to be a more of a yellowish rather than the, the white that they are now. Mm-hmm. And it was a self-contained, it, it produced light, but it didn't illuminate anything. I knew it was in the tree but it didn't like, I couldn't see the leaves or the branches that was in. And it was, it would do like a pulse in, in a one, two, three, dark, one, two, three, bright. And it did it a couple of times, just a soft, slow, steady pulse of, of light. And I'm, I'm watching this and I'm literally immediately trying to figure out, okay, is there a light in my room? Because at the time I was watching TV and literally the light from the TV was the only thing producing light now i'm looking all around my room i'm moving my head the light outside is staying the same and it's not going anywhere and then it just on the maybe the couple of times that it did after the one two three and it dimmed and it dimmed to darkness and i didn't see it ever again yeah, that one sounds really familiar to me, except for the the pulsating part. I didn't see that, but everything else is spot on. I don't know what those things and, are. No, and and it's the trees outside my my house are sweet gum trees and they are they grow really tall and the branches themselves don't even start up until at least 10 feet and even those branches are like maybe a, a centimeter less in width so it's not like someone could have climbed it and put you know a flashlight or anything there because I was literally trying to figure out what the heck is that it wasn't my neighbors because it was during summertime and even the only time you could actually even see lights from the neighbor's houses would be during winter when all the leaves were gone and I've never seen a light that close to my house at all 
and it just it was weird i i can't i none of these things i could explain and and i almost feel like i'm slightly crazy by saying all these different just like these different pinpoints like oh i'm hitting all these you know the quote unquote right paranormal buzzwords or taglines oh she saw you know lights floating in the trees or she saw dark figures with red eyes or something and that was actually what kept me so long from telling people about these things because it sounds like oh it's just everyone else's story it's you 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 pick this off the internet or something like that and i think it's much the opposite uh now first of all you you said that you've been listening to my show even just my show early on from Uh, double digits so you've heard many people come on and they have just a list of one-offs right which i find the one-offs very fascinating the stuff that you just can't really quite classify but on the piggyback of that is you said well it sounds like everyone else is but to me the more data points we have for these similar stories because some of them have just a little tiny something different that'll spark someone's memory or maybe that will kind of prod them to share with whoever, even if it's not for a show, maybe that'll be like the thing that goes, Oh my gosh, I had the same thing happen to me. That's crazy. And and it might validate something for them. So I think that these, these one-offs are just as important as some like big story that takes three hours to tell. And it was this, you know, life changing event, whatever it is. So I appreciate people like you coming forward with the, with the one-offs, even if it's a huge list of stuff, that's great. I wish yeah. I had a list of stuff, except for in the house. That's not a lot of the stuff in the house. I think as, as you well know, is not all that pleasant to have occur when you're trying to sleep there and just live and be happy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know if I probably described the way the light is. I I know I've seen these um, recently. They're like little, lamps that look like the full moon Mm -hmm. and you can have one that's white or yellow and it had the same uh, tone of illumination for um the yellow one where it's like it has that inner light but it doesn't really shine it out right just it's a glowing orb and so that's when i saw those i'm like that's what it was It, it it looked like that but when i saw it originally they didn't have that sort of technology second story floor and everything but and uh, I guess, you know, the the next thing going, because I'm looking at my list and everything, trying to remember all the crazy stuff that's happened to me. There was a point where um, uh, my parents got a divorce. My dad is not a good man. And we think, at least my mom thinks that, and, and actually, pardon me, too, when things started to get crazy with my dad, other things started happening. It Nothing exceedingly malevolent but i just was like oh there was a couple more frequencies of of things happening um and it just my mom actually you know says that that the our old house was um, evil when when my dad was uh, forced to leave she went around and did anoint oil and the crosses and said prayers over the entries and exits of the house and everything um just to make it feel a little bit safer and whatnot I remember this one time again. It was maybe when I was late teens or something. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember the the timelines and, and and it just sometimes floods all the way together. Uh, but I was carrying boxes up the stairs. They were not heavy boxes, but they were. It was a stack of them, and they were big and awkward enough that you're just like, oh, they're just slightly over my field of vision, and want to be careful going up the stairs. And it was uh, during the day and I'm carrying them up. And again, this, it comes out of my mom's bedroom and it's this, maybe it's about the size of a football or, or a soccer ball or something, but it's uh, all I remember seeing is this gray fuzzy. And the way it moved was this multi limb like a spider, except way more legs than a spider thing that just rushed out of the room towards me and i had the feeling that it was intending to trip me up for me to fall back down the stairs it to to the point that i saw this thing and i literally like did that you know the the crazy hop jump of something's going past my legs and i don't want to step on it but i don't want to get hit by it on the stairs and i remember even looking back down behind me to see if it kept going and i didn't 
see anything. It was just this fuzzy thing. I don't, I don't know, but it had a clear intention of, I want to trip you up on the stairs and make you fall. Now this was your, that was your mom's room, right? Yeah. My, um, uh, my parents had their own separate bedrooms because a, for the fact that my dad's Nord. And so he had a room next to hers. Uh, it was, it, when you went up the stairs straight forward was my mom's bedroom. And if you looked the corner to the left of the stairs, that was my dad's bedroom. Basically you could, it was just a connecting corner doors and stuff like that. Sorry. One hmm? more thing. The, the hunched over uh, figures were also in your mother's room, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is just conjecture, and you don't even have to tell me. It might be a little too personal, but uh, I'm just wondering if, you know, they did eventually divorce, so I'm assuming there was some fighting going on. Did they happen to go into your mom's room a lot to, to argue or fight or anything different about that yeah, room? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they, they because it it'd be the furthest room from, um, you know, from the kids' rooms and everything, and mm. they, they would argue in there, and or they would argue downstairs. My, I will... When I say my dad was not a nice man, uh, he would love to torment you, at least psychologically or financially or or whatever. Um, he, again, I didn't learn this until years after it happened, uh, but he had a home office uh, that was uh, down the hall near the playroom. And after a argument that my parents had, he went into his office, closed the door, and his parents had been hunters. And so he had actually had a shotgun behind the door. He apparently opened the window in his office, removed the screen from that and actually shot the shotgun outside the window, making my mom think that he had killed himself. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so she told me that she would, you know, she banged on the door saying, you know, are you okay? Are you okay? You're alive. And when he didn't answer, she didn't know if he he was dead or not, which you know he wasn't. But he would. Um, she actually threatened to call the police to have the door broken down, and that's when he opened up the door. Wow. And yeah, he 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 was he was not a guy, good guy. Yeah, but um, do I think that that contributed to a lot of stuff? Absolutely. But after he left, things it didn't seem so dark and scary, but. M- other things would happen. And I wouldn't even say that they're like darker scary. It's just like, Oh, more stuff came by or came visiting. For example, I was, again, this was during the day. This was, I was probably in my twenties or early twenties or something like that. You know, 19, 20 year old. Uh, and I'm walking back to my room during the day. This little man comes out of my bedroom and just he's you know walking along and i mean when i say little man i mean he's like at most three feet he walking walking and minding his own business and you know how um when you um run into a person you don't mean to and so your body just naturally backs up reacts like reflexes reflexes and everything that's what we both did i backed up away from him and he backed up away from me and he's looking at me and I'm looking at him. He, it's almost, I could see it in his eyes that he realizes I can see him because what he does is he's, he sort of cocks his head and smiles a little bit before putting his hand up and wiggling his fingers, like almost a, a, a toodaloo or see you later hand wave. And I actually waved back at him because my brain is thinking, be polite and, you know, don't be rude. And he just fades away. Now, what did he actually look like? Can you compare him to anything of, of facial wise? Yeah, I, I can, I can tell you. So, so he was, he was three feet tall. He was dressed. He was an old, old man. And like, uh, he had leathery skin. Uh, wispy white hair that he was dressed in almost colonial garb. His coat was red. His, I want to say his knee breeches and his, sorry, I'm, I'm a, I majored in drama and theater and costume design. So 
I pay attention to people's clothes a lot. So I know exactly what his clothing was. He had a, like a colonial style waistcoat, knee breeches, stockings, and buckled shoes. Uh, The shoes were dark and the buckles on them were brass. The stockings he had were white. And I want to say his breeches and his waistcoat matched. They were like either a a buff color or a tan color or something like that. But he had a red overcoat on and he had, I didn't understand it at the time, but he had a hat that I thought looked like a mix between the colonial tricorner hat, you know, the three, the triangular three-corner hat mm-hmm. and um, what I known as the bicorn hat or uh, the uh, Napoleon's hat you know, that sort of half moon thing that they wore, except it looked, it looked like it had a, a, a bump in the front. Cause I'd always thought that Napoleon style hats were just, you know, flat. They were just that half circle thing, but it, so it was like a weird amalgamation of that. Um, like I said, he had leathery skin, like wrinkled, craggy skin, he had normal human teeth, uh, but there were like some were missing and everything when, when he smiled in that. He had sky blue eyes. My brain immediately went to that's a fairy. And I did not want to be impolite to him. So when he waved, I waved back at him because I'm thinking, you know, all the fairy stories that you hear, you got to be polite to them. Otherwise, you know, things might happen. I'm like, okay, if he's in my house, I'm going to be very nice to him. I'm going to be polite and wave and 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 so on to that. And the 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 really weird, really really weird thing about this: a couple of months ago, I had bought a book called um, "The Fairy Faiths of the Celtic Counties," mm-hmm. and it's by. Uh, Evan Wentz, and it's an old book. It was like originally published in the late 1800s and everything. But this talks about the documentations of the various fairy lore and whatnot. And he mentions in the various like Wales or Scotland or whatever how. Okay, I will. I will say this. Describe a leprechaun to me. What color do you associate leprechauns with, Shannon? Oh, green coats and hats and red hair, pale skin. Yeah. Apparently, originally, they were wore red coats. They used a term called cocked hats, which were actually bicorn hats, mm. like what Napoleon wore. Wow. And I looked up to see what what they looked like, and it was what this little man was wearing. <laughs> when I read that, I put the book down and just I had to think about that. I I I mean it am I saying that was a leprechaun? I don't know, but it was definitely a little man in a red coat with a cocked hat. Yeah. This was not a dream. This was me coming back up to my room to get something or just to go play on the computer or something. It was it was in the middle of the day and uh, yeah. Did that scare you? I don't know what's no, it it didn't it didn't scare me. It it was it was just like sort of a huh that happened. Okay, continue on and don't acknowledge it again because I mean I when I was little I read you know I I'm an avid reader and you know, I'd read all these Greek myths and fantasy books and everything and one of the authors that I enjoy reading he's actually a one of Ireland's best um, storytellers to continue the oral tradition and everything. His name is Eddie Linehan. And he talks about how you don't want to acknowledge certain things because it's just, it's better that you don't let them know that you can see them sort of. And I want to say there was a, there was someone else you had on a long time ago about having, you don't want to acknowledge these things. But at the same time, you did feel compelled to wave back at him, which I think it was a smart thing to do because, as you say in, in Fay lore, you you're not rude to these things. It's not good to be rude. No, you don't. You don't know. I mean, I'm just. I'm just like okay. I, you will. <laughs> I will outright address it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, exactly. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, but it's it's like you know, 
the sort of the old fashioned etiquette of, you know, when you go down the street or, you know, pass a lady, you know, the gentleman would tip his hat, right. you know, just as a, a formal acknowledgement sort of thing. And, you know, it's, it's just like, so at the same time that, that around that time that happened, uh, my parents had a horse farm and everything was a separate property, but uh, I would go there and clean the stalls on the weekends and, you know, after school or whenever. I remember I was there by myself cleaning the stalls and for whatever stupid reason, I was talking to myself out loud, just being a snarky little dumbass. Uh, and I was either doing a mental, just a, a stream of consciousness talking and everything, but I was, remember, I was snarking on the fairy folk and the good people and everything. And I remember that I left the stall and almost immediately this rock, maybe the size of a half dollar just goes whizzing by my ear from within the barn. Mm. And it's not like it had dropped vertically. It was horizontal. I literally saw it pass from behind my ear to in front of me. And it was, it was just, it was just this rock and no one else was in the barn, no one, no animal, no human, no nothing. I was on the property by myself. And I looked at the rock that landed on the floor. I just immediately said, you're right. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. And I'm sorry. Because on the property, there were, and I mean, I'm in North Carolina. So this is not Ireland. This is not Scotland. This is not, you know, there's enough of a disassociation from that home country and everything, North Carolina. So I'm just like, I'm still going to be polite because on the property, there were during the summertime areas of the grass that would essentially have darker rings of green on it. Uh, they weren't mushrooms or anything, but it was just like my mind said, Oh, fairy rings. I, it was either like maybe a day or two later, I was going out again from the barn to go retrieve a horse maybe bring him in for for dinner or something but it was, it was again during the day out behind my barn is was a wash pad it was a concrete wash pad where you just would either rinse out buckets or wash the horses and i'm walking past it and i'm hearing the tap 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 of someone running across the the concrete pad. And this is maybe like a 10 foot by 10 foot. So if you're a normal human sized person, one or two, you know, tap taps, but this was a smaller, but definitely a person running. And it sounded like it was a hard soled uh, shoe on it. I turn around and literally uh, I see what looks to be the, the back half of basically essentially a human leg and maybe part of his back of a person ducking behind a fence post under the bottom rung of the, the of the fence. So that would be maybe a foot tall. It looked, again, like a buckled shoe with knee breeches and stockings, except it was more shadowy. It, it wasn't in full color. It was, it was like tones of black. And I looked at it. And as much as my curiosity said, hey, you know, go look, go look to see if you can see more. Uh, I decided not to. And I just, I, again, wanted to be polite because I had acknowledged the presence. And I just said, good day to you. And proceeded into the pasture and not trying to think about what the heck just happened. Did you start to dislike going in and around the barn because of these two incidents? Mm -mm. No, no, the... The the barn, the farm was, I, I like the farm. It was um, big, like 36 acres or something like that. And uh, I could literally go out because um, sometimes the horses would play a hooky and not come to the, to the gate when it's feeding time. And we'd get there sometimes way after dark. And so I would literally go out into the pasture just with a um, <clears throat> halter and lead rope no lights at all, and I would be able to find them. I would just go out into the darkness 
because I knew where they would be. And I would have no problem going out there um, in, in the dark uh, because some of our horses didn't like flashlights. And also, you know, just was less cumbersome. You know, it had at least one hand free as opposed to one hand holding the halter and one hand holding the flashlight. Granted, there were some nights that it felt darker. It felt like the darkness was more tangible. It felt like uh, how, how there was something bigger and older walking about. And and when when I say that, it's not it's not like a predator. It's not like a a bear or a cougar or anything. It's this. I, when I told the story to other people, it would be like this would be something like the wild hunt, like you didn't want to go outside on nights that felt like this, um, that it would, if you did have to go out, you want to be quiet. And it, this wasn't just a, a me, my mentality of me going back to being scared of the dark. The horses would actually behave differently on these nights. Um, some, most nights, if you would call them, they would come running up like full gallop out of the darkness. And it's, it's a really fantastic sound to hear if you've ever heard that, but nights that it just felt, darker they would actually quietly walk up and i i don't know um have you ever been around horses much shannon a little bit not as much as i'd like okay um so you know there there's a hierarchy between them you will have the the head mares or geldings or stallions be the ones that would be at the front gate and they would you know, kick or bite anyone who, who would try to get, you know, get to the feed before they could. Um, that would be n- normal horse behavior. We would have this one mare that food was her number one concern. She would always be the one at the front and you could not tell her otherwise. But on these, on these nights, they would all quietly walk up and the head mares or the head gelding would stand looking out at the dark. And they would let the lower horses go in first. They would all behave on nights like these. Mm. They would all be quiet. They wouldn't rattle their buckets. They wouldn't be, you know, calling out for food. They would all just eat quietly. And so, I mean, that that doesn't feel right. And I mean, nothing ever happened on those nights. It just felt like a, you want to be quiet. You don't want to bring attention to yourself. So as far as you can tell, there's really no rhyme or reason to when these nights would happen. It wouldn't be according to moon fit, not that you were looking up moon faces back then or anything, but you know, uh, whether during that time prior to after anything like that, as far as a pattern. Like it happened more in the autumn, in the fall with weather changes, but even some, yeah, it wouldn't happen as much in the, in the summertime. But yeah, it, it, it maybe would be when the moon wasn't out as much. But it would definitely be a a difference of tone of of feeling. But I, like I said, I didn't really pay attention to the moon phases or anything like that. And that's actually something and, I've never heard of, and that's fascinating to me. That that last part really creeped me out. That the the horses of uh, lower standing, essentially the higher standing ones would let them go out to pasture first. That is very creepy. They would come into pasture. Or they come, come into in pasture, from, right. Yeah, literally the, the, the lead mare and the lead gelding, who would normally be at the gate banging their hooves against the gate saying, feed me, feed me, get me mm. in, I'm hungry now. They would be well out into the pasture, at least maybe 40 feet away from the gate, watching, just standing out and wow. watching the darkness. That's very creepy. It is very creepy. Thankfully, where I live now, that hasn't happened. Um, so I don't know if it's an area thing. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's. I'm grateful that that doesn't happen because because where I am right now, we don't have a proper barn. So I have to stand outside and feed them. Uh, and it's not fun as it is with the um, feed buckets in the dark as it as it stands. So if it were a one of those quiet nights, I wouldn't. They wouldn't get fed, I can tell you that right now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, not unless someone else is out there with you at the very least. Can And can I just say yeah. before you go to your next event that mm-hmm. the, in relation to the little man in the red coat, I mean, you have details like 
leathery skin, white hair. You've got his clothes down to the pinpoint, even his, his blue eyes. That mm-hmm. detail of the missing teeth, it just, that's fascinating to me. I mean, I mean if, like, if you look at, because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't, you know, crazy or anything. If you, if you like Google or search uh, old Irish men, you know how like the Irish farmers have just that, that craggly skin yeah. of, you know, they've worked outside in the sun and that's what it looked. It didn't look, I mean, he had a, you know, a, a large nose and his, and you know, but it wasn't like, Oh, a hooked nose or something terrifying or, or, you know, just something that, Oh, you'd see in a, I don't know, a fantasy book or something. He looked human. He was just three feet tall and, you know, slightly, slightly out of proportion. I mean, his, his arm seems just slightly longer than normal, but he was, as weird as it sounds, I'd say he was, he was handsome. For for his appearance, he was handsome in his in his old age. Well, I'm sure he appreciates that. See, and that yeah. that between yeah. that and the wave, I think you're covered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, things sort of the 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 next big big thing was um yeah. So it was, it was after the divorce. It was at, it was just me and my mom living in the house, and for whatever reason, uh, it was three fifteen in the morning. I was dead asleep. I don't know if you've ever had this, but you know when you just wake up, you open your eyes and you're just, you're awake. It's like you're not groggy, but Mm -hmm. it's just like you close your eyes and then you open them and you're awake. So I I was not groggy at all. Uh, The way there was a green light from... I'm trying to think of it is I thought at first it was the light from my power strip on my computer because it was coming from the floor area where I would put my my laptop uh, once I was done with it uh, for the evening and um, so it was like be projected from almost the head of my bed where I'd sleep you know placing it down to the far side of my room but I know that the light from my laptop power strip wouldn't have projected that far because it illuminated that entire side of my room with uh, a green light and at the foot of my bed was a woman she was tall uh i'd say six feet at least dressed in a black skirt full floor length with a long sleeve blouse buttoned up and uh her hair was either like a short 1950 styles or pulled up and back almost like a Gibson girl style. She was, she had, here's the, the, here's, here's one of the weird things. She had a clipboard in her hand. Like she was assessing me sort of. And she was looking at me almost as she was satisfied for uh, the, again, it sounds weird, but it's like she was satisfied with the progress. I don't know what the heck that means, but it just, she had, she wasn't happy. She wasn't, she just had a look of satisfaction on her face. And I'm looking at this woman, I'm on my side, I'm looking at her. And I realize that there's a woman in my room because she is solid. She, I can't see through her. She seems to be there. And it's almost as if, as soon as I realize that there's a woman in my room, her eyes just shift over to me and that look of satisfaction. She gets a little bit more of a smile in the corner of her mouth as if to say, so you can see me. And then she starts walking towards me and I will not, I'm not ashamed to say this. I screamed. I screamed because as far as I knew, there was a woman in my room. So I immediately roll over to the other side of my bed, which is where the uh, my bedside table lamp is. And I'm thinking, I better get this light on because I was expecting at any moment for to feel like a hand going across my mouth to stop me from screaming or to grab me or to something. And so I flip the light on and I look back and no one's there. No one is there. And then with 
within maybe 10 seconds, my mom comes bursting into my room. She opens my door and says, what's wrong? And I said, there was a woman in my room. There was, I mean, I even looked under my bed thinking maybe she ducked down below my bed and is hiding in there. You know, this, this woman that's dressed in a floor length skirt and, and everything. My mom proceeds, we search the entire house. We make sure all the doors are locked and they are, all the windows are locked. The dogs who at the time we had a English border collie and a beagle basset mix. So we had both the sight and sound and smell area covered for if we had any intruders because they would go off on the smallest, stupidest thing. There's a squirrel out in the yard. They would go off on that, but they were, they were quiet. Literally no one else was in the house. And when I get back to my room, I, I would have, I would have brushed this off as sleep paralysis or a waking dream or something to the you know equivalence of that. But my mom asked me the question of, did you close your door when you went to bed tonight? And I said, no, because ever since my dad had moved out, I would sleep with my bedroom door open just because I wanted to make sure I could hear anything in case, you know, stupid stuff happened and he decided to be a complete and utter idiot and break into the house or something like that. But my door had been closed. I remember that when I woke up to see the woman that where she was positioned, she was standing in front of my closed door. My mom opened my door when she came in. So I don't, I don't know what to say about that. Also, you don't hear this very often that when there's things in your room, whether they be mm -hmm. crouched or standing, uh, you don't hear a lot that they actually end up moving towards someone. Uh, that is a very terrifying aspect of that story. It was. I mean, I was, I was literally preparing. I was thinking, if I don't get this light on, and even if I do get this light on, I was waiting for a hand to come across my face to to grab and to shut me up or to pull me back or something. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. I don't know what she was. I don't know who she was. Uh, I've looked through, I have a lot of old family photos and I can't find anyone that looked like her. So uh, I just makes no sense because, you know, obviously, like I said, these are weird one-offs. I can't find any connection with anything that has previously happened. I don't know. Now, what did your mom say about this? And, and how many of these occurrences, I know the very first one you didn't say anything about, but what about the subsequent ones? Was she told about everything else going on? Well, obviously, she heard me screaming. And I said, there was a woman in my room, there's a woman in my room. Uh, and she still doesn't know what the heck to make of that. She literally, anytime I bring that up, she's like, I really don't know what the heck that is. Oh, um, no, I mean the, um, like, everything else, like the gray fuzzy thing with the tons of legs and the little man in the red I, coat. I, I don't think I've told her about any of that oh. because we were, we were already dealing with enough right. real life stuff because, at, well, because the as crazy as my paranormal life, my real life was also also uh, crazy because at the time of my parents' divorce, my mom's mom, it was discovered that she had a brain tumor. And so she lived up in Ohio and literally we had to drive up to Ohio. That's a, at least an eight hour drive to go up, deal with a woman that had claimed to be my mom's sister and my mom only has brothers to try to get power of attorney from her. So we had all this crazy actual stuff going on. Right. And I wasn't going to bother my mom saying, Hey, you know what? I might've seen a little man in a red coat or there's a fuzzy thing that tried to trip me up on the stairs, you know, cause I, you didn't need that extra stress or that extra worry or concern. At least I didn't think that she needed it. Right. She, like I said, we got enough stuff going on in our real lives. So. But yeah, literally within a, a month of discovering the brain tumor, my grandmother passed away. We had all that stuff to deal with. Um, oh, and it was not my grandmother. I can tell you that right now. That was not my grandmother that was standing at the foot of my bed. 
not the right body shape, um, not the right height, because I think I was actually taller than her. She would have been a redhead. She was not a dark haired, <laughs> dark haired person. But um, and also, I don't think she would have scared me like that. And plus, I think she was still alive at that time. I didn't feel I felt terrified for my life because, like I said, it felt like a woman, a person was had broken into the house and for whatever reason was standing at the foot of my bed. But I didn't feel malice from her. She didn't feel malevolent. She didn't feel evil. She was just there. I don't know. Uh, just would have been nice if she it. hadn't have walked towards you. I don't think you needed that aspect of it. Yeah, no. And it, it's it's like part of me is thinking, why did I scream? You know, I could have just said, who are you? And maybe she would have answered and, you know, given me like, here, I'm here to give you the winning lotto numbers to make your life easier or something like that. <laughs> uh, but it seemed like after that, there was a brief, very brief explosion of stuff happening um, after the, after that woman. Because it was maybe like at most a month later, I woke up again. It was again around, around 3.15 because I remember rolling over and looking at my clock after after the second thing had happened. But uh, again, I'm sleeping on my side and I just wake up. There's no illumination this time. It's it's still, you know, dark in my room for whatever moonlight or it's a security street light outside. And I just see what looks like this person peeking over the side of my bed and just looking at me. I he was done in complete shadow, except for the eyes. The eyes were, you know, sort of how in animation they just have the the oval eye shape and the little black dot for the irises mm -hmm. you know just a really simple it just it looked like it was that like you had a black figure and they were like okay we got to show where the eyes are so put the white parts and have have the black stuff and it was just like i could see curly or wavy short shortish hair like boys having a little bit longer hair than normal like i don't, I don't know how they used you know, just chin length hair but it was sort of um curly or wavy because it stuck out a little bit like bedraggled or a mop head or something like that. And it is just, he was watching me. And I, again, didn't feel any badness or anything. It's like, he it was almost a curiosity of watching me. Then he, the eyes got wide because I think he realized, and I call him a he because he gave off like a little boy sort of vibe. The eyes got wide because he realized, oh no, I've been seen. And he ducks up. He like literally does almost like this dive to the side. And I'm waiting to hear a, a thump on the floor and I don't hear anything. And that that was basically it. I roll over to see what time it is. I'm like, oh, 3.15. Okay. Because at this point, I'm just like, chalk off another, you know, scratch, you know, mark the bingo card off, eyes looking over at my bed, you know. Because again, this just seems to hit the weird if you had a bingo card of paranormal experiences, it's just like, hey, this is this is what's happening now. Okay, check that off the list, you know. Get a couple more. You want a free burger or milkshake or something. I don't know. Or you get to see Bigfoot, you know. Yeah, when does Bigfoot come in? Let's make it fair for the big guy, you know. <laughs> I, I, I will say this. I will say I've never seen Bigfoot. I've never seen Dogman. Never seen Aliens. Nothing like that. This is all just like everything else. Do you think, um, um, and this may be too early to ask this because people, mm -hmm. there's more coming. Uh, Sorry. But do, no, no, I didn't mean it like that at all. I just, I, maybe I should say this, but I'll go, I already started it. I'll just go ahead and say it. Do you think this is all one thing that just marauds around as different things tailored to different people? Um, may, maybe, I don't know. I think... I would say it could be the same group of entities of the good people, the fair folk and everything like that. And because again, it just, for some reason, it seemed like this little guy looking over the edge of my bed was sort of connected to the woman and maybe even connected to the man in the red coat. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It just, I mean, if, if, if you have any listeners that, or, because I know you have connections with certain people in there. I know you've told people um, in the past, hey, if you want me to reach out to people that would know anything or if you hear something from someone, 
yeah, I'm curious. I'm like, does anyone have any insight to this? What the heck does this mean? You know, am I just some random, hey, let's go screw around with Jessica now. Let's, let's go, you know, we haven't bugged her in a while. Let's go check in on her. Or does this mean something? Because I don't know. I can sort of see very fragile, tenuous strands of connections between these things, but I don't want to outright say, yes, this right. is exactly what it is. Because oh, yeah. Know, there's know? there's definitely no way to yeah. know for sure. That's just conjecture. Yeah. But okay, well, what about like your older brother, for example? Did he have anything go on? Not that I know of. I don't think. What'd he tell you? No. If, if he's ever had anything, he's never told me. The only thing that I know that my parents both experienced was when they were looking for property before we bought the the horse farm. A little bit down the road was an old abandoned chapel. I mean, we're talking maybe at latest it was built in the 1800s, probably 1700s or something. It was derelict. It was ramshackled and whatnot. And there was a little small cemetery there. The plot of land beside it was for sale. So um, my parents had decided they would go, you know, look at the plot of land. And then they decided, oh, hey, let's just look at the, you know, the church and the cemetery. And my mom is, and when I say it's a small area, I mean, it's probably no more than 40 feet wide, the entire property of that thing, or at least the area. So my mom was looking at the headstones in the graveyard and my dad decided he was going to go. This This is all what my mom has told me. I was not there. But um, my mom said that my dad went into the chapel or into the church. And then she heard a church bell ringing. And my dad came running out of the, out of the church. And the way that the, the building was so broken down is you could look inside the, um, where the bell would be in the, in the steeple. And there was nothing in there. There was and not so even that, a bell in there. Yeah. Oh my no. gosh. That's a cool story. No. Yeah. And from what I can remember of that, because that, that place is, is been bulldozed and um, removed and everything. And I hope they got rid of the, the, the interred people as well as just the headstones. But when we would drive back by that place, I would just instinctively not look at that. I would not look at the chapel. I would not look at the church. Not out of like, oh, it's where dead people are. It's just like, no, you don't want to look at that. No, don't want to look at that. Just like some sort of weird instinct of sort of like, you know, something is hot, so you don't want to touch it. Yeah. You just, you don't want to conjure up something or, or bring it again, bring attention, bring attention. It's, it's because I, while this actually sort of um, segues right in, nice into it, um, the thing that I made mad in the woods accidentally. So, like I said, there, there's, I have my childhood home about, had about 10 acres and it was all wooded and everything. And there we would go back into the woods and we found what was the remnants of an old, my mom called it a moonshine still. Uh, but we found even foundations of an old cabin and stuff like that. Like basically nothing there. And you could literally walk over it and not realize it was there. But, and I'd have no problem going into the woods, walking through and, and whatnot. This one day, I was at my house uh, alone. Mom had, mom had gone out for errands or whatnot. And I heard a car like slam the brakes on the screeching things. And I look outside the window and I don't know if this is connected or not, but I saw a dead deer in my backyard. It like my brain had thought, okay, a car had hit it. It jumped the fence of my backyard and had died, you know, for whatever reason. And I realized that, okay, I might as well just go get, you know, get the deer so that the dogs don't go after it and I won't have a bigger mess to clean up. I go down and it's, a fawn that is old enough that it still has, it's lost the majority of its spots, but it still has um, some stray remnants. And it was maybe about 40 pounds, 50 pounds, or something like that. I don't know how much deer weigh. Uh, but so I 
really don't know how to dispose of a body, but I'm thinking, okay, I just got to get it into the woods and let nature take its course. Um, I carefully carry it out and I take it down into the woods, down the, the hill that it is. And I find this area that is, it's like a little mossy, not a clearing, but it's where the light had filtered through and there's more moss than normal. And it, there's like this little stump. And so I lay the dead deer out, lay its head on the stump. I say a few words over it, say I apologize for its death. And because I don't know, I just wanted to have it, you know, give it something, you know, be nice to it in its last moments. I try to, I don't like to mess with dead things. I just, you know, you'd be respectful to the dead. That's what I was always taught. And so I, leave it at that. And okay, there's going to be maybe, you know, a dead deer there or whatever. It's, it's far away. You can't see it from the house and whatnot. That night I have a horrible dream. I have some, I have a dream where it's like storm clouds and eyes coming from the woods and something is mad at me and it's directly mad at me. Like, how dare I do, do this thing? Uh, it was mad that I had brought something to its quote unquote doorstep. Like I had literally, well, I had just essentially dropped a dead body off in the woods and I had never had a dream like that. I, cause those woods, they were just my woods. I never had a problem with them before. Uh, I had my favorite trees in those woods. It just seemed like I had pissed something off by bringing in this dead body, this dead deer. The next day, what I did was, um, again, my mom had left and gone to run errands, and I decided that I was going to go apologize. And I got maybe 10 or probably 10 feet into the woods, and I just had a feeling of, if I go any further, it's going to be bad. I'm, I'm not welcome there right now because I did something wrong. And I just said out loud, I'm sorry. I apologize. I did not mean to put that deer where I did. And I'm very sorry. And I backed out of those woods. Part of me has a feeling that if I even dared to go down where I put the deer, it wouldn't have been there. I don't know. I mean, I told my mom about it uh, and she said, well, do you think it was evil? I was like, no, it's just, it's a force. It's, there's something there that has always been there. And it just, you know, was upset, you know, that, dropped a dead thing on their doorstep. I don't know. I, that, it sounds weird. I know. It sounds really, really weird. Not, not to my ears, and I'm, not, I'm sure not to many of the listeners' ears. I mean, did you have any subsequent dreams after that? Or nightmares, I no. should say? No. No, no. And I mean, I mean, these were like floating eyeballs that were shooting electricity. I mean, they were coming straight from the woods. I've never, I've never had nightmares about that woods. Those were, I would literally leave my windows open, and during the summertime, you could hear, um, uh, the does and their little babies snorting in the woods, calling to each other. And I'm just like, oh, okay. And, you know, so it just was natural. It was, I was comfortable there. It was, that was my place. And it was really funny because I was thinking, did I ever go back into those woods again after that? And my initial thought was no. But when we were finally selling that house, uh, there were massive holly bushes that were trees actually because they're like 20 feet tall we had those cut up and we couldn't pay to get them removed so i literally took a wheelbarrow loaded the logs up and everything and just carted them down in the woods like it was nothing and i only just realized that maybe a couple months ago that that's what i did after that so it was like completely normal like whatever error was done was forgiven Mm. because i mean i've never even had to worry about walking on snakes in there because we do have copperheads. We do have, apparently we do have uh, black timber rattlesnakes or, or whatever. I know the rattlesnakes, but yeah, copperheads and everything, but I would never really have to worry about, you know, going traipsing through the woods and accidentally stepping on them. You know, it just, it, I actually had a friend who said, aren't you worried about that? And I'm like, no, no, it's never happened to me. I've never stepped on a snake. I always look where I'm walking, but I've never stepped on anything bad. And it just felt normal. It felt like how it used to feel when I was taking those um, holly trees down. 
Well, see, and even know. even being respectful of the dead deer wasn't mm-hmm. enough to uh, save you from that. No, I th- I think I well, I mean, it'd be just like when I think it was almost like, hey, you're involved in the or, or you come across a car accident. And, you know, unfortunately, someone had passed away, so I'm just going to take the body up to someone's house and leave it there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's, it's almost like, a, you know, what'd you do this for? You know, you shouldn't have done this. You should have at least buried it. You know, instead, you just put it on my doorstep. What the heck? I don't know. But, yeah, but that that's at least takes care of my childhood home. Uh, but it's not nearly the 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 weirdest stuff uh that because it's like the i'm trying to yeah yeah the the next the the last three things i have are the the weirdest ones um so we sell my childhood home and we actually end up renting a house in a suburb with an hoa which is something i've never had to deal with before and i never want to deal with it again i'm a country girl i don't i'm not used to having neighbors within 20 feet that every time you go outside in the morning to get to leave for work, they're like, hi, good morning. I'm just like, I'm used to having animals as my neighbors, not people. But this was a, one of the earlier homes built in the housing unit. It wasn't creepy. It was very nice. It was like built in 2008 or something. So it was, you know, brand new. We're one of the, you had the original owners, but then they decided to move to I think California and keep that as a rental place. So we had that. It was nice. It was, I don't know. Again, it was just, it was just a house, but there were, I would notice that. So while in the house I grew up in, I would see white shapes, just like little fluffy white cotton ball sort of things here. I, at the rental house, I started to see flickers or ripples in the air. And we're not, I'm not talking about like full size human beings, like what people call shimmer man or the predator or something like that. I mean, it's just like, it'd just be like a, like a one foot section or something like a little ripple. Like if you had a tissue paper or something, nothing big. And it'd just be a little ripple that would move across my field of vision in the periphery. And if I'd look, nothing would be there. Or it'd be a little flash of shadow, you know, little, little tiny things. There was at one point I thought we had a mouse, and it and it obviously wasn't because we never had anything like that. But the one 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 big creepy thing was I was up late you know, reading or something. It was about one thirty in the morning. Again, my bed was facing the doorway out into the hall. I just see this. A thing coming from like the upper right hand corner of the bedroom doorway, like looking in from the hallway, this white circle, this 2D flat white circle of a, the most rudimentary face you could have, literally like black dots for eyes, a triangle for a nose, and a little line smile. And it just, it's like, it just peaked down from the corner yeah and like i said this is maybe two feet wide and it's looking at me and i'm looking at it and its smile again it keeps it in a line but it's like a scribbly smile that goes into almost a a half circle just like this big scribbly smiley face essentially and it again fades out it fades out like what the the man in the red coat did what I did was I basically looked for a couple of the um they had the soundtrack from sister act on my computer and I just started playing the um the hymns from sister act just to make my me calm down because I had a feeling that if I looked if I went to look around the corner of of my bedroom door at that exact time, it would still be there. And I had a feeling that it was a a big, big thing Mm. that, um, yeah, I, it was, I I swear to God, it was a, if you literally took 
literally a flat circle, two foot wide. And you just would draw the, the black dots for eyes, a triangle for a nose, the line smiley face. And it that's what it was. I don't know. It, it honestly looked almost like a mask. I didn't want to go after that. That that was that had the same feeling as those little dark shadows with the red eyes. I mean, two foot wide is big. Yeah, whatever is it's attached to is not good. No, and it it was it was just like again. Let's freak Jessica out. She's had a quiet time. Let's make her go crazy again. How long um, had you been living well, there when this happened? Um, uh, maybe about. Let's see, we stayed there for uh five years so maybe about two and a half years and that was literally the only big thing that happened there nothing else crazy nothing else in your estimation is that something quote-unquote following from the other house i don't know i i don't know it may maybe maybe i maybe i have something you know attached to me or they're just or just like i'm a proverbial lighthouse for things it's like oh hey look there's a there's a roadside tourist attraction let's go freak that person out yeah you know i don't know yeah like they um, know that you can see them and that's why they're yeah, attracted yeah, to yeah that's yeah and it and it's not like i've actively practiced saying hey i want to make sure i can see these things it's just like they happen sometimes and i i don't really want to know if i can practice to make because i yeah it's well you've had enough it, go on so yeah if you go looking yeah, for it, it goodness knows what you're gonna uh, have happen right yeah it's it's the what what's that quote from um, jurassic park just because you know that you could doesn't mean you you yeah, should exactly something like that yeah uh because i mean the only the only weird thing that i don't even think is con connected to it was when we were moving into the house, the previous owners, who he was a man from India, or at least, you know, descended from India, uh, because we had met him once, I believe, over a Skype call or something like that, or we, we received his mail or something like that. We had found large drawings of what looked to be Hindu gods in uh, one of the closets. But they're just really artfully, wonderfully done. Like he was an artist and had done them and rolled them up. And so we had, you know, looked at them, admired them and put them back where they were. This was not like a secret door or anything. This was literally just like something he had left and, you know, forgotten to take with him when they had all moved out. Because we had also found, for whatever reason, a very large bottle of vodka that was half drunk or maybe it was even used for cleaning supplies because it was like the cheap stuff that you'd use for deodorizing and, and whatnot. But no, nothing creepy, nothing, nothing weird like that. That's a really unique one off. It really is. Yeah, I know. And it's, and cause I want, I want to say the, the only closest thing that I could have, cause it maybe it might've been your show. It might've been someone else's, but something coming up the stairs with a very large grin. But that one, I think, had they remembered them seeing teeth or something. This was just literally like a little scribbly, mm. smiley face. And it's 2D. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, it, was, it was flat. It did not have any sort of thing like that. That, that, was, that was the weird thing. Yeah. Mm. Um, but. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and the, yeah, the big question is, which we'll never know. Thank goodness you don't. What was it attached to? Amen no, to not knowing. no. no. I you could you could take me back to that time frame and I <laughs> you could say hey I will get I will pay off all your bills for the rest of your life if you just go and look through that you know peek around your bedroom <laughs> door no I no something just said don't go out there yeah it's waiting for you to go out there and you don't mm. want to go out there yeah so thankfully it basically calmed down after that um only I only got two more big stories um one uh one that i love to call the creepy murder house <laughs> and so when my mom and i were looking for properties we were either it was the time of the housing market or whatever but it, we were having a heck of a time looking for properties because we still had the horses so we had to have land attached to it 
one of the places that we went to, it was this, I think it was, it was a, it was a one story house. It was seemed to be built in the seventies and it was empty, no furniture or anything in there. We, we go to there and it's a slightly, it's an overcast day. You know, the sun isn't really shining, but it's not like rainy or drizzly. It's just, it's just overcast. We go there, the windows all are, are covered and whatnot, but there we enter through the sunroom and it's maybe three of the sides are, you know, open glass and whatnot, lovely tile and everything. And the one thing I notice first in this house was there is a corner fireplace. It not a normal size, sort of like a small mini fireplace. And it had this was this was the weird thing because, like I said, there was no furniture in the house. There was like no personal properties. This was just a vacant house, but it had a large mound of ashes in the fireplace. That sort of weirded me out because I'm thinking, okay, you're selling a house, you're putting a house on a market, you've cleaned the house, you've removed all the furniture. Why is there still a large mound of ashes in the fireplace? And it wasn't like it had just been left there. I mean, it had been like scooped and piled into the center of that fireplace. So that was a bit concerning. But, you know, I I brushed it off. And, you know, I I think I might have pointed it out to my mom and the realtor. But, you know, it wasn't made much of it. Connecting to the to the sunroom immediately was the kitchen. And it had that. 70s yellowy light and yellowy everything and formica and 70s I don't know it did just it just felt like that in the kitchen in and this just may be really stupid people I fully admit it that maybe it's just really stupid people that didn't know where else to put these things but my mom's looking through all the cabinets and she opens up the oven and there are a bunch of aerosol cans in the oven. And this house still has electricity on it because the kitchen lights are on and everything. And we're like, that shouldn't be normal. So we actually remove the aerosol cans from the oven. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'll admit at this point, I'm just starting to get like, this is a little creepy. This is a little weird. Like you said, either you have really stupid people here or something else. I don't know. We go down the hallway that connects from the kitchen. We go to the, ma- I think he said it was the master bedroom and it's, it's hardwood floors and, you know, could be really good. And it just, it, the only light in the entire house is the kitchen light. So we go into the master bedroom and it's a hardwood floor. And I kid you not, there is a, what looks to me like a massive blood stain on the floor, a very big, massive blood stain that all three of us see. And in fact, I even see dribbles of stained blood walking out of the blood out of the bedroom. And I, I literally, I, I noped out right at then. I'm like, nope, I'm not looking at any more of the house. And I decided I would go back into the sunroom area because at least that felt safe. I don't know why, but it, that felt safer because it had the natural light coming in. And I'm just like, I'm going to be standing out here. The Mom, you and the realtor can explore the rest of the house, but I don't want to see any more. I did, already made up my mind. Did your mom and the realtor say anything about that? Uh, I want to say that the realtor kind of brushed it off as, oh, that's not a blood stain. I'm like, yeah, that is. <laughs> that, that's, if it's not a blood stain... What it you know it's 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 I mean it was it it was either it was either blood stain or someone had uh taken like wood stain and just dumped a lot on the floor mm-hmm. you know and so I'm standing in in the sunroom and I'm I'm and I notice another door that's just off to the side of the kitchen and. God, I swear I would not survive in a, in a horror movie. I really, I swear I wouldn't because I'm just like, oh, I'm going to open up that door for whatever reason. I go to the door and I turn the knob. The knob turns, but it doesn't open. 
because it feels like something's blocking it. And I look all around and at the top of the door frame, we're not talking the side frame where a normal lock would be. We're talking at the very top, the, the lentil, the, the, the portion at the very top, there is a sliding deadbolt. What in the actual hell? Yeah. I stupidly undo the sliding deadbolt. I mean, literally it is a vertical thing. Cause I'm thinking, you know, if you had, if you have something that you want to be locked and you don't want little kids, you would have it up high, but you would have it on the side of the door. This was at the very top vertically. And I open up the door and it, it leads down into the basement. And from what I can see of the basement, it bright, white, clean, spick and span. I mean, we're talking white floors, white walls, white everything. Even I, I want to even say that the, the stairs leading down were white. And this was clean white compared to the yellowed 1970s aged appearance of the upper house. This was white down there. And I maybe get the door halfway open when I get this immense fear of shut the door now or else something's going to come up and rush the door and get you. And so I literally shut the door and relatch the deadbolt and I back away from the door and I stay right in the middle of the sunroom and my, I'm on full alert of, had I not been like a early 20 some year old person, I would have, been the child screaming mommy let's get out of here please but I was literally watching the door to the basement and the door that would leave lead off to the rest of the house because I was convinced something was in the house now I don't know what it was but it just it I did not like that house Uh, eventually my mom did come back with the realtor and he was like oh there should be a basement around here somewhere and I literally pointed I I pointed to the door and I said, that's, there it is. He tries to open it. And I said, yeah, you'll want to get the lock at the top. I think at that point I told my mom, it's like, I'm going to wait outside. I, I'm I'm a terrible person. I literally left a mom, a mom in that house with the realtor. <laughs> the realtor I couldn't care less for, but I was just like, I needed to get out of that house. And so I stuck on, stood on the back deck and my eyes are just going watching every single window because it's like I'm feeling something is in the house I don't know what it is I finally noticed on the back deck that every like corner or edge of the wood was all chewed uniformly I mean I've I've had squirrel damage done on houses and so I know what squirrel damage can look look like but when you have squirrels chewing woodwork it's not uniform it's like there are some areas where they chew more and some areas where they don't this was all uniformly chewed and it was not like termite damage or anything or anything like that and so i'm just like yeah no i've already ticked this house off we are never going to go go for this house thankfully my mom and the realtor come out and i'm like mom let's go back to the car now please and she agrees with me It actually took the realtor a couple of tries to lock up for whatever reason his key would not work to lock back up. And so my mom and I had already gone back to the car. And as soon as we shut the door, uh, my mom says, we are not getting, we are not including this house on anything. This is house is off the, you know, I said, no, we are not getting this house. And when the realtor comes back in, uh, gets back in the car, he's like, he apparently knew the woman that put this house up for sale. He said, I don't know why she put that house up and just left it at that. And mm. when I asked him a couple months later, I was like, Hey, you remember that one house? He's like, yeah, that was a crazy weird house. Wasn't it? And he just left it at that. I don't know. That could have just been a creepy weird house, but it, it didn't feel right. Well, and I got to say, most people spend money in the basement last. You know, you're going to upgrade the kitchen and the floors and whatever else. The the basement sounded like it was upgraded, spick and span, all painted pretty and everything. 
And that yeah. whole house, even in a tough housing market, is a big bag of nope. Well, and here's the thing. Uh, in North Carolina, only one out of four houses actually have basements. Uh, oh, so that should, yeah. have, that should have been like a huge selling point for that place. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, we, we, it rains a lot here. And so, you know, you get all the swampy clay water or the clay foundation that keeps water in the house. So, you know, you wouldn't want a basement that could potentially flood or get mold or whatever. So, I mean, just, just like, why did that have a basement? Why was it all nice? And why the heck was, I'm more weirded out by the fact that there was ashes in the fireplace out of a house that has nothing else in it. It just, it had a lot of little pinging of, you know, your radar, your the red flags going off. And like I said, it could just been nothing. But of all the weird houses that I looked at during the time of looking for property, and there are some weird houses. There's like this one place that I swear no, they actually they actually said we had an excess of concrete, so we just kept building. Mm. Yeah, it was a uh, yeah, but this just it. Well, and here's the thing: I tried looking for that house, looking for the emails that would have had pictures of the properties. I can't find it anymore, and it could have been just because I got that off my list and therefore didn't want it. But it's like, I can't even remember in the general vicinity of where that house was. Well, you know, it was down there, don't you, Jessica? That was uh, the Dexter kill room down there. Yeah. No, seriously. It was, when I say it was like white and, and spick span, I could have sworn that it maybe even had plastic. Oh. Plastic on the walls. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, no, no. Nope. No. Here, I'm going to turn the gas on and we're just going to walk away. You're like, actually, let, yeah, let's put those aerosol cans back in the oven and turn it on. Okay, let's just save everyone the trouble here. Yeah, so that's why I'm like, that's a creepy murder house. I don't like that. I hope to God that that place has like torn down. And yeah. Just, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, it was brick. It probably wouldn't have broken. Oh, that, wouldn't um, have, that would not have worked. No. But um, yeah, so even even when I'm thinking back about that place still gives me the creeps. I don't know where it is. And I'm like, I don't ever want to know where it is. I don't ever want to find it again. Yeah. That sounds like something like per perfectly placed in the new adaptation for it. I mean, it's a perfect, you know, the house on Nybolt Street or something. It's just yeah. a whole bunch Horror of wrong. American Horror Story. That's, yeah. that's the murder house for American Horror Story. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm creeped out. I've never even been there. Just your description is like, yeah, I'm, I'm good on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, no, I don't, I don't want to. Oh God, God, oh, I hope that never sold. Oh, God, help the people that they did buy it. Who in the hell would it. buy that place for real, though? I mean, when you walk in and you see all these various things going on, even if you're not a sensitive person, which obviously you are, but even without the feeling of standing at the t you know top of the basement and between the lock and the ashes and the stain on the floor. Mm -hmm. Who in their right mind is going to move into that place? I don't. Well, I've sort of met people like that. I have a friend who's a photographer and he, you know, he's asked me to help a couple of times on the, um, you know, holding lights and rigs and whatnot. And this one time we had to uh, pick up a model in, uh, in, I think it was Greensboro. And we went to her house and she seemed very nice on Till we went into her house and literally the wall, as soon as you go in, the wall on her living room, the accent wall, had, I want to say, at least 12 old-fashioned wood Ouija boards nailed to the wall. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I did not put my back to that wall at all. I'm just like... I have a thing. I've never touched a Ouija board. Um, my grandmother was actually told never to touch them. And I didn't even know what they were fully. But I remember in like my third grade class, we had one. It's just like one of the Parker Brothers, you know, game boards and everything. And my desk was near that. And I hated having my back. to. I didn't even know what it was. And I still hated having my back to that thing. And it was one of those Parker Brothers, you know, the, the, the mass produced ones yeah. that, hey, it's just fun little game but this woman had hand carved old-fashioned wood ouija boards nailed to her wall as decoration 
And I'm just, I, yeah. I'm probably demented enough to do that. Just, but that's just because also I'm not sensitive. I hardly ever have really, especially in the quote unquote, just straight paranormal realm. I hardly ever have anything happen to me. You know, it's been a, a lot of years. And if you, I don't know if you want to count the orb in the trees, straight paranormal, mm-hmm. fine or ghosty, whatever, but who knows what the hell those are. But yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably hang some Ouija's up. Yeah, well, I mean, they're they're probably they're probably like, eh, Shannon does that that podcast. She gets us out enough. So we don't need to bug her. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that is what's going on. <laughs> I keep waiting, you're, you're Jessica. Just- I'm telling you, nothing nothing finds any interest in me. But that's all right. Like, yeah, no, she gets enough weird stuff. <laughs> um, but the 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 last the last story because I know I've been keeping you for a while. Um. The, the last story is the biggest, craziest, I, I call it the biggest and the craziest because it's had the, it's definitely uh, undeniable of, of what happened. So in about uh, 2016, I was temping for the state bar. And that in its own self was a story or whatnot. Um, lawyers are very interesting people. But so the state bar is, uh, located in in downtown Raleigh, and let let me preface this: this uh, the location that I'm going to be talking about. It is a private residence, so anyone who's listening, please do not bug these people. This is someone's home. It is on the historical registry, and just you can walk by it, but just don't go up and knocking on the doors because I'm sure they get enough crazy people already. The state bar is. Uh, across the street from a old residential home and you, you notice it's really weird because of where the house is placed it's not in a normal neighborhood it's literally in the corner of a parking lot for one of the museums there because it was one of the probably one of the first homes built in Raleigh so it's it's on the historical registry of deeds and everything it's uh they're called it, there are actually two houses one is the haywood hall and gardens which is a different place and this is the richard b haywood home and so every day after uh, during lunch i would have to walk by it to um go go to the food courts and whatnot you know the food the restaurants downtown and everything and it is just this unassuming two story um, sort of plantation era, you know, white columns, everything very, very Southern, very, very nice um, house. And it always had the the shades drawn and there would be plastic toys outside. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's like a daycare center or something like that. But anytime I'd walk past it, I would look at it almost like expecting to see someone in the window or see someone out on the porch. And I never did. And I just thought, okay, you know, it's either vacant or the people there are, you know, work during the day. And obviously I'm here during daytime. So, you know, no one's here. One of the managers at uh, the state bar, uh, she was on the historical uh, council for Raleigh or, or historical society or something. And she found out that I was very much into history. And she was like, oh, hey, we're having uh, the tour coming up and we're getting some new areas that have never been open to the public before, including like a, a watchtower and all these old factories and the house that's directly across the street from us, the Richard B. Haywood house. And she said, oh, would you like to help make it look nice, maybe research a bit into it so that we can give things for the tour guides to give interesting information. And I said, sure. And um, the woman, she uh, mentioned that the family, it's still in the family. The It's been a direct descendant handed down from generations and generations. But the original owners, the Haywoods, they're in the local cemetery, the um, Oakwood Cemetery. And I said, oh, hey, I will go during my lunch break just to gather information on the headstones to see, you know, dates and see if I can help look up family members and, you know, just whatever. I Honestly, I probably wanted to get out from the um, the state bar just to go someplace else. But so I spent 
maybe three lunch breaks, you know, going there and two or three or something and just writing down information. Again, I was told, you know, I grew up learning to respect the dead. And so I actually, if someone was walking by while I was doing it, they'd probably think I was weird because I was literally talking to these headstones being like explaining who I am and what I'm doing, why this weird person from modern era is getting your information from people from the 1700s or the 1800s or stuff like that. Um, 1800s, that's what it was. And, you know, I thank them. I don't know if they're listening. I mean, clearly after this, I think they do listen. But, you know, just be respectful. And so I get the information. I give it to the woman. And she says, okay, great. This is awesome. We are going to be going to the place to help clean it up, to make it look presentable, you know, make the bushes outside look nice, make everything set up for the the event and everything. And I was told to come along and uh, I was told to wear clothes I didn't mind getting dirty in, uh, you know, jeans, t-shirts, sneakers, you know, because we're moving furniture, we're going to be cleaning things up and whatnot normal clothes that you would wear. And so it was a Saturday. I get there. One of my coworkers, uh, I, th- I think it was Lori, was outside trimming up the bushes. And she says, oh, hey, Jessica, everyone else is inside in the parlor. Uh, just go inside and take a left. And they're right there. I was like, okay, cool. And, you know, I'm in jeans and t-shirts and sneakers. And I, you know, it's a gorgeous house. It really is. And in the inside is Oh, it's a treasure trove of of history stuff. I was gobsmacked about seeing all the stuff. Anyway, I go inside. The the layout of the house is there's the one long hall that has doorways so you could go from the halls to all the various rooms. The the kitchen was in the back, the dining room, the den. You had the hallway, and then you had the parlor and what they had, what the woman living there had made into her TV room. Um, so it was like a, a, maybe a sunroom at the time. So I go in and I see to the left in the parlor are two of my other coworkers on um, the woman who's head of the historical society, another coworker and the woman who owns the house. I turn left, go to, to enter the parlor and you, you know how how doorways they have that one strip of wood that sort of delineates between different rooms. Mm -hmm. It's like on the door frame on, on the floor and everything. Right. Um, the, The second I put my foot on that piece of wood, I get this immense overwhelming feeling of I'm interrupting and I'm underdressed. Like, I'm horribly underdressed. Like this is a formal black tie society thing. And I'm here in jeans and t-shirt underdressed. It's like I'm due to do a presentation in five minutes. And I just realized I left everything in my house over an hour away. Feeling of dread and embarrassment and everything. I look up, look forward. And I see, this is going to sound crazy. I see the the three living people in the room. They're just kibitzing they're talking they're joking around they're moving furniture you know la 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 la. and i just my head turns slightly to maybe a 45 degree angle to the right and i see it's not quite an overlay but it is because she's not there but she is and and it really doesn't make she's maybe like slightly more out of focus than everything else this woman standing there in an 1860s style plantation dress, uh, a a day wear dress, not nothing formal, nothing, anything dark hair pulled up into uh, the low nape of the neck bun. And she's maybe three quarters turned to me, but she's addressing a man who is seated on either a, uh, like a chaise lounge or a backless chair, or maybe even a footstool. And he's dressed in similar 1860s style clothes. And she's looking at me. And I get this feeling, what are you doing here? I 
look away, look back down, still feeling the fact that I'm a I remember blinking and thinking, no, I'm here to clean. I'm not underdressed. And then I look back and she, they're both gone. And I go into the parlor and I'm very subdued. Like I was like, before going into the parlor, I was looking at all the his historical, the, the furniture and everything. And now I'm like in a hush toned, walking very quietly over and I say, hi, I'm here to help clean. What would you like me to do? And and they're like, oh, hey, Jessica, you know, oh, awesome. It's great that you're here. Uh, OK, so what we're going to have you do is you're going to vacuum this room and dust the stuff. And we're going to go on to the opposite side of the house and handle where we're going to set up the food for next weekend. And if you have questions, please feel free to. No, yeah, fast. you're no, you're doing great. I'm just listening. OK, uh, so literally they give me this vacuum cleaner and a dust rag and. You know, I'm I'm looking, you know, they, they're just like, hey, yeah, you know, you just be, be careful. Don't knock it into things. Make sure don't wrap the cord around. You know, just be careful. These are some old furnitures and everything. And I'm like, okay, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. They leave. And I start up the vacuum. You know that feeling when someone's looking over your shoulder? I... This was not looking over their shoulder. This was like if, she, if I had turned my head to my right... I felt I would have bumped noses with this woman who was looking over my shoulder. I mean, this was an intense of the, I'm watching you like a, you know, like a hawk and you better not mess up. I mean, this was, this was a, she doesn't know who the heck I am, what I'm doing here. I'm not the proper maid. I'm not the proper you know, help or anything. And she is watching me. And the whole time I am, very carefully vacuuming, making sure not to touch a single thing, not to let the cord wrap around anything. I will take long, you know, sweeps and, and, and whatnot. And if I were to pick up, cause they did have mementos from the family, like they had the pocket watches and all these wedding items. And if so, I ha if I had to go dust them, I would literally turn off the vacuum cleaner, not leave it running, turn it off fully make sure it was, you know, not going to fall over on anything. Take up the items, carefully wipe them, carefully put them down. I mean, like being like, this is a house of glass in my mind, uh, because this, the lady of the house, because that is how I will absolutely refer to her. There may have been a woman living there, like physically alive, blood, flesh and blood, but she was not the lady of the house. This, this woman in the parlor was the lady of the house. The whole time I'm cleaning that, I'm just saying constantly, this is a beautiful, lovely house. This is beautiful furniture. You have this wonderful antique. My my family has these antiques too, but they're not nearly as nice. I'm just trying to be as polite and genteel and as wonderful as I can be. And the second that I finish vacuuming and dusting in there, I feel her step, take a step back with an air of well i guess you know what you're doing i then go into the rest of the house and as soon as i leave that room i am back to being normal and carefree and relaxed and we i help hang up the original deed that i actually read out because some of the words are fa faded and they need to know what it was and i'm going through all these different things the 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 kitchen was gorgeous and, and whatnot. And uh, I'm just looking at all these old books, all these old antiques, relics, artifacts and everything. But anytime I would go back into that parlor, I would immediately become quiet and reserved and explain why I'm in here. Like I had to go retrieve the vacuum. And I explained that to the woman of the house there and that I uh, didn't mean to intrude. And I was just going to take the vacuum and very no nonsense business. Yeah. So we clean up the house and we do stuff and it's getting to the point of we're getting to, ready to leave. <clears throat> My three coworkers are basically out the door. I stop the woman. We're, we're standing in the hall. The parlor's to my left. We're not in the room. God, no, we're not in the room. 
the, the woman had actually been impressed because I, the, over the fireplace in the parlor was a portrait of the, the lady of the house's name is Julia. It was of her mother and her three sisters. And it's a wonderful portrait and everything. Um, and the, the, the descendant was actually impressed that I knew the history of, and it could name off the names um, because she was trying to remember who the heck the, uh, the daughters were. And I was able to name them all off because again, I had researched and looked into the family history. And so we're getting ready to leave. Coworkers are basically out the door. I'm waiting for them to get a little bit far enough away because I didn't know how this reaction was because it would be handled because I already have the reputation of, oh, you're a theater girl. You're sort of the, the weird, crazy person. And so I ask um, the woman who owned um, I said, is that room, I didn't even finish the sentence and I just sort of tilted my head through the parlor. The woman said, oh, yes, that's her room. I felt her all around the house, but that is definitely her room. So that woman has felt her before, but has anyone else actually seen her or that man? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, on, I honestly don't know. I simply left it at that because, again, you know, I <laughs> seeing dead people is not normal, <laughs> at least in the way, I, you know, I don't know, it's just to be, but I don't know if she's ever seen, probably has been seen the the way the way the woman responded is like, yeah, that's our ghost. Right. We've seen her. We've felt her. The funny thing is when I was years later, when I was trying to write up my initial stuff so I could actually remember, and I was thinking of, should I write this entirety thing and send it to you? I found an email from the woman who ran the historical society. And it was an email that I had not opened up and it had the attachments about the informations of various items in the room, in the various rooms. I swear to God, I had not opened it. It had remained unread because as far as I was concerned, it didn't have anything to do with me. This is what it said about the parlor. The parlor is known as Julia's room because this house was built for Julia Haywood and in the room are her family portraits, family furniture, and it has been said, her spirit. Well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That, I mean, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool confirmation for you. You hadn't even opened it. Yeah. And I had learned, so the Richard B. Haywood house was a house that was built specifically for Julia. Because Julia had been born and raised in New York City. Uh, lower Manhattan, apparently. And she did not want to stay in Raleigh, North Carolina, because, mm. you know, podunk South. Right. And so her husband built her that house for her to stay. I don't think she's trapped. I don't think she's sad. I That is her house. And you can have as many people living in there, like flesh and blood, but she's the lady of the house. Part of me would love to go back to see if she would uh, react the same or remember me or whatever. But like I said, it's a private residency. And part of me also doesn't want to go back because I don't want to prod the issue too much. Because she she saw me and I saw her and she knew that I saw her. And yeah. Well, it's definitely not a residual haunting in the case of Julia then, because she's very, uh, very interactive. She can be uh, uh, felt and seen, and I'd imagine heard. Probably, if you hung out there long enough, you'd you'd have some phantom audio situations going on. Now, what about the man? Was that her husband? Have you seen pictures of who that might have been? Uh, yeah, I've, I've. So I've never. Let me let me see if I. I think I may have found a picture of. Uh, no, there's there's no real pictures. Uh, I'm sure there are pictures because he's a doctor and, you know, he's one of the famous people of, of Raleigh. And, you know, I'm sure there's probably portraits of him, but it's that might have been him. I don't know. I literally I didn't feel anything. It, I didn't feel anything from him. It, it was almost like if you had a, a portrait and then only she came to life from that portrait. 
you know, you know what I'm sort of saying mm-hmm. about how he's just like a a background image. So like he could have been residual and she had yeah. more of a, a presence and more energy to do what she needed to do. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's a really cool story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, you know, looking back at all, all the stuff that's I've encountered and stuff, it's really cool and really creepy and like really makes you go, there are, to quote Shakespeare, there are more things on heaven and earth than are dreamt of in our philosophies. And what's what's kind of funny slash tempting slash scary is I have a friend uh, who lives in Wales and he's going to be getting married at some point and I'm going to be one of his, um, he wanted me to be his best man, uh, which I said, no, make your brother be his best man. Uh, but he wants me to be on one of his groom's women whatever yeah and so i'm almost tempted to let's go to ireland let's go to scotland just you know make it more of a trip than just going to wales for for a wedding and just see if anything happens because i oh well and i have ancestors from ireland and from scotland and wales and everything yeah considering what you've told me so far i would uh Happen to say, if you would step in just about any building in any three of those locations you just mentioned, you would definitely have some experiences. Yeah. Well, in 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 closing, and this is only if you want to, but there there is a few things that have gone on in your current home, right? Yeah. Gosh, this, it it seems like nothing crazy or anything, especially compared to the the Haywood house. Um. So, uh, the house. I'm living in now, it stood uh, vacant for about six months because the previous owner had passed away. The house was also built in the 70s, but this has definitely a different vibe, does not have a basement, which is awesome. And we had to do a bit of work before we could move in because the previous owner, uh, Mr. Ward, was a heavy smoker. So we would have to, we had to tear up the carpet and uh, remove some of the wallpaper. And what I would do is uh, my mom would work on it during the day and I would come over after work and, you know, work a couple hours. So it it just get done faster and everything. It's a bit disconcerting that so the interior walls had, you know, a lot of wallpaper on them and I would be there by myself. No one else, no dogs, no nothing, just be me. And I would hear knocking on the other side of the wall that I'm working on. And it's it's not like it's an exterior wall. It's like it'd be the wall dividing the TV room from the dining room. So literally, I could probably look around the door frame and see the other side of the wall. And when the knocks would happen, it'd be in threes. And I could oh. actually feel the wall tremble just a little bit always in threes always Uh yeah but i mean i didn't feel any no malevolence because i know the whole in threes is supposed to be um a a bastardization or a mockery of the trinity and everything this this was not bad this was at least it didn't feel bad to me because i will i will say since we've moved in since we've lived here which has been about five years the first year or so was it felt weird. Like we would always on occasion smell cigarette smoke and which would be odd because we have, we removed all of the carpeting and even the um, underlying foam from underneath the carpeting. We are literally on subflooring right now because when everything hit with the pandemic, we were like in the middle of renovations. So, so we're like, okay, we're just doing subflooring for until this craziness blows over. Um, so it's not like there's been, we've cleaned the walls with TSP, which is supposed to remove cigarette smoke, but it'd be on occasion. We haven't, I haven't smelled it recently, not for a couple months or anything, but on occasion we would just get whiffs of cigarette smoke. And my mom has actually said that when she would smell that, she would just say like, hi, Mr. Ward, uh, we're taking care of your house. Uh, hope you don't mind with the changes that we're making, but you have a, you know, it's a wonderful house and we're very grateful for it. 
we would, you know, we'd do that. But yeah, it would, I would have a feeling of if I would look down the hallway while I was there at, by myself, I would actually make sure to have that bedroom light on because uh, that's the master bedroom at the end of the hall. Ironically enough, it's my bedroom. Um, so because I would feel that there would be someone down at the end of the hall. And nowadays, whenever I'm in, in my bedroom, occasionally I would get the feeling that someone would be coming down the hall. Not, I wouldn't hear anything, but I would just feel like a presence of someone standing in my doorway. And nothing malevolent, just like, I'm here. Hi. So it felt like maybe he was checking up. Maybe there was something else. I don't know, because I think I had read that certain places that are vacant for long enough, they do uh, attract occupants and everything, or just people passing through or whatnot. So I felt that I have... I've also smelled my grandmother here, and that, but that, that, that was another thing, because I would also smell, after my grandmother passed away, I would smell her in my childhood home, and I would, I'm trying to think, I might have once or twice smelt her in the rental house, but really, it was either in the Dalton Drive house or in my current home. Um, again, I haven't smelled her in a while, but it would just be her perfume. I would walk into a room and I would say, mom, it smells like Graham in here. And she would agree. Um, and then the, the, it would go away. Literally, we would not move and the smell would go away. And again, I'm still seeing occasionally flickers of shadows, flickers of movement or ripples in the air, peripheral vision and whatnot, never when I'm looking at directly at something. Uh, the only, only thing that really creeped me out aside from the the knockings was the 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 oh god closet thank you because I couldn't remember it in my master bedroom was we were renovating it we were painting it and I remember that we're just about getting ready to get started on it because we'd removed all the stuff and I went to flip the light on in there the light burst or shorted out, or, you know, the, the filament broke and everything, so it, it popped and it went dark. But this white, I almost felt it was like a bird, white bird thing swooped out from the light, and you know how birds dive bomb you in order to make you duck, or you duck because you think they're going to dive bomb mm -hmm. you? It literally flew out, I ducked, exclaimed a couple of curse words, and, you know, looked to follow it, and of course it wasn't there. I'm cussing because I'm literally sick and I'm at this point, I'm just, I'm sick and tired of all these, all these things happening for, you know, all this stuff. I'm like, you know, you're not welcome here. If you have any evilness, evil intent, you're not welcome here. Get out, you know, and in Jesus name, get out of here. You're not welcome here. I mean, to the point that I'm just saying all this stuff that my mom who is outside of the house comes in and she's hearing me saying, she's like, what's wrong? I said, nothing, nothing, just a thing that I'm telling to leave. It's, you know, I've not felt anything bad here. Again, I still get the occasional presence of someone's watching me. Very rarely, you know, oh gosh, I, I said, you know, I don't feel anything bad here. But I have felt once or twice. It's just, it's literally this passing through of this. I was getting ready for bed and I, you know, just laid down. And I had the sudden sensation of, Put your head under the covers and pretend you're asleep now. And so I did that. And I hadn't done that since I was like, you know, 10 or something, you know, hiding under the covers. And I felt this thing enter the room. And it wasn't even entering through like the normal doorways or anything. It's like it literally just walks through a wall. And I feel it lean over me like checking me out and I have my eyes closed because I don't want to open them up because I don't want to see if there's anything to see. And I just say, if you're evil, if you have a bad intent, leave, you're not welcome here. And it just, the feeling dissipated. 
I've only had that happen once or twice here. And that's, you know, in the span of the five years that I've been here. And I don't know. What was the size of the bird thing? Um, maybe a pigeon. Or, you know, like a songbird size, you know, no, nothing big, nothing like a hawk or, or anything like that. You know, just big enough that I was like, yeah, songbird or pigeon. Yeah. You, uh, you're sensitive as all get out and basically I'm, a lighthouse for these things. Yeah. It's, 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 been, it's been a thing. I mean, some, my mom told me that, uh, I have no idea if I, if I said this already, but, um, so when my grandmother was going to marry my granddad, my granddad was Catholic and my grandmother was actually going to um, convert. She was going through catechism and everything. She went to the local priest of Father Typey, who told her, because she had a dream about a woman with roses. And Father Typey told her that that was St. Bernadette. And he told her to stay away from Ouija boards. As it turned out that my, my granddad actually left the church because the, the, the Catholic church that he was a part of said, you can live with, you know, Kitty, but you can't, it's just better if you don't marry her, you know, because that'd be a sin and everything. And my granddad said, no, I'd rather do the right thing and marry her than to live in what he considered sin. And so he actually left the Catholic church and Graham never converted and we, we aren't Catholic or anything, but the neighborhood that... Uh, my grandparents lived on, they lived on a street called Bernadette. The actress that got me into theater and everything of doing all the stuff that I do nowadays for fun was Bernadette Peters. And I also named one of my dogs Bernadette. I don't know if that has anything to do. It should, could just be coincidence, but it's interesting. Uh, it sure is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but um, the the, yeah. the gamut that these run, I I find the one offs just fascinating. Really, yeah, because you're, I mean, I'm, you're left scratching your head. You're like, am I? Did I really see what I saw? Because you're just, at least if it's a repeat thing, it's like, oh hey yeah, we know every night at nine p.m. something walks down the hall, you know. But if you're just like. This is a random glowing orb or Knox or a little man in a red coat, you know, that's, or a 2D thing smiling at you from the hallway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that one can definitely stay a one-off, right? Yes. Yeah. No, I will never go down that rabbit hole. I will go down every <laughs> other rabbit hole, but I will not chase that thing. Oh, yeah. So. Well, I, I. Absolutely, 100% appreciate you being willing to share all these experiences with us. And, I mean, considering the fact that the next uh, Patreon live chat, video chat, is mm -hmm. going to be the world's most haunted. I mean, if you can if you can join that one on the second, I think that would be pretty amazing. I think you'd have a lot of good input for the locations that I chose. I will, I will yeah, I'll be there, yeah. Well, yeah, thank you so much, Jessica. And, oh, tell your mom hi for me, by the way. I feel like I kind of know her after hearing about all this stuff a little bit, you know? Yeah, absolutely will. Yes.